In this next example, I'm going to sketch a structural steel frame that's similar to what we've worked in one of the units. On this one, the frame is a larger structure, so I'm probably going to want to sketch at a smaller scale. For this one, I'm just going to try a scale of a quarter inch equals one foot. And again, to think about the scale factor here, I'm simply saying when I say that scale, it's one quarter inch equals 12 inches, and that would give me a ratio or a scale factor of 1 to 48. What that means is every inch drawn on paper represents 48 inches in the physical geometry. If I had my frame and it was 30 feet wide and just converting that to inches and dividing by the scale factor, I'm going to draw on paper seven and a half inches. And I already know this, every square equals one quarter inch. And so conveniently, each square is a foot. And this is an eight and a half inch wide sheet of paper. So I'm going to start my frame over here. So it'll be a little big for this. It's five inches plus two and a half. And then, in my example, I'm going to show the frame 18 inches, I'm sorry, 18 feet. And so that'll be four and a half inches tall. And we'll go into detail here in a bit exactly why we draw these to scale. Again, four and a half inches paper would give me the I'm just showing in the supports. Now for this sketch I could also come in and occasionally you'll see some engineers drawing brackets here that's just showing that it is a fixed one. If there's no other pin supports shown then this is definitely fixed. If I draw the bracket in, there's there's no question about it being fixed. Um, that's at a quarter inch scale. Now I'm going to draw the same frame at eighth inch scale um, because for this exercise I want to do some work with deflected shapes. So eighth inch scale it would really be half those dimensions. And so my frame width in this example, show that's the height of my frame. Again, the circle represents that it's a hinged connection. And we're going to talk about the different connection types. And for this example, I want to simply apply a unit load. I'm just going to show one kip. And it's always good practice to add in the dimensions. It's good practice to add dimensions on those as well. This example is relatively straightforward. I know right away that my reactions here at the base, assuming these are the same stiffness, which is a function of the materials, modulus elasticity, and the section property stiffness for the moment of inertia, I'll have a reaction in the x direction on joint one and a reaction in the x-direction on joint two and those two will equal each other by symmetry and just graphically looking at it I know that that's going to be half the load applied and then that tells me very quickly what the moment will be and essentially 
it's rather straightforward. That moment will simply just be a triangular load. Like so. And the magnitude of that would just simply be the force, which was that reaction, times the height. And again, it's always good when you're starting to use structural analysis applications to be able to understand these moment diagrams and how easily they can be applied. Um, I'm going to simply show here. Kind of go from there. This next example, working off this diagram, I'm going to show the deflected shape. These are very important in structural engineering because they give a lot of insight into understanding the structure. And to begin with, I know that when I push on this frame, it is going to go to the right. It will also be dropping down some. I'm going to exaggerate that. And I know that it's moment connected here, pinned at the support. That means this base can rotate, but it will tend to be a 90 degree angle here. So I will get a deflected shape in a curved fashion where it asymptotically bends up. And then I'm going to draw a very light line connecting the two dots and I know that effectively if this member is bending that way the deflected the angle of rotation will be a clockwise direction there and I know if I'm bending this member here there'll be a clockwise direction I also know from my moment diagram the inflection point is in the middle so I'm going to come over here to the middle and I'm next then going to sketch in an exaggerated deflected shape. Before I've ever touched any computer software, I should already know what this shape is going to look like. And this will give me a lot of intuition into the structure as I begin to look at it. And the first thing I want to know is not even magnitudes at first, but I want to have a feel for what the moment diagram is going to look like on this shape. And I also want to know what the deflected shape will look like. And all of this comes from just having a very quick hand sketch of knowing what it's going to look like. Now it will be very intuitively obvious to the most casual observer when we're looking at the analysis data out of the computer application if it's behaving right. We will know if we've modeled in our supports correctly. We will know if the behavior is symmetrical on our structure. And we'll know if the loads are behaving in an intuitive fashion where the reflected shapes are matching what we believe we should be seeing. And this is at the heart of structural engineering. This is what's differentiating being a technician who enters data in and is at the mercy of the application to pump out results versus a structural engineer that can intuitively know if the results look right, if they feel right um, as it goes forward. And so these are the kind of examples we're going to keep highlighting as we go through this structural engineering curriculum. One of the things we're doing in this view of the sketch is we have gone through and shown the moment diagram with tension side positive on the horizontal beam. And so to do that, if I look to the deflected shape, that beam, the tension side of it would be on top on the right end and it would be on the bottom half on the left end. So that if you use a tension side sign convention, it would be an alternate view than the original sketch. This is important. Many 
structural analysis applications use tension side and it's an important to note that robot is one of them by default in the software so I wanted to show that so that when we look at the moment diagram it's clear uh, the that uh, you're using a tension side positive moment convention that concludes this video